We are now live. And my phone has just started speaking to say at home with the fishes is live. Woo. Yeah. So um, good evening, everybody. Good um, evening. We can see a few people on the chat. So thank you for joining us. And um, this is At Home with the Fishers, episode 14, starring Chris and Nicola Fisher and with... Andy Burke. We're Andy Burke. Andy Burke in the house. I'm so, so glad to be here. He's live all the way from Illinois in America. And if you don't know where that is, you should do. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, it's yeah, it's quite a very big, famous part of America. Uh, mm. So. Uh, yeah, that's where Andy's from. What okay. exactly is the town you're from, Andy, please? You can put that down. I'm in Bloomington, Illinois, which is a couple hours south of Chicago. Oh, very nice. Chicago. Bloomington. Yeah. yeah. All I can think of now is Bloomingdale's. How bad's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's from Bloomingdale's in Illinois. Right, right. No, I'm only one block south of Route 66 as it comes through town. So. Whoa, that's so good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, hello to everybody on the chat. We've got uh, Steve Twydell, Andy Pugh, AH. Hi, Steve. Stone, Hi, Randy. Uh, Christine and Michael Hesseltine. Hi, guys. Wayne the Wood Turner. Hi, Wayne. Steve Combs, Leona Hi, Steve. Fair. Hi, Leona. So, hello, everybody, and hello, everybody who's um, not in the chat but is watching. It's great to have you with us. And we're absolutely delighted to have Andy with us tonight. Um, we met Andy at Maker Central and um, for me it was one of those conversations that I talked about a lot didn't I after Still I came Still talking home. about it yeah um, and, and funnily enough when, <laughs> when we were talking in the sort of like the prelude to this uh, segment with Andy you found out you've got even more <laughs> stuff in common I know. which we, we will discuss later but yeah flipping hell folks uh, lovely guy and I'd spoke to him before via the Makers International podcast yeah and the guy is uh what's what's the nicest way to say this you can get that he's the most lovable kind of crazy you can get <laughs> but he's weird yeah he's weird but you but you know what he's quite intoxicating because of that weirdness so uh, we, we like weird. We like weird. We do weird. On, on we a, are weird. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There ain't no thing as normal. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, huge, huge pleasure to have uh, yeah. the guy. Well, we we had this amazing conversation about photography at Maker Central, and um, for me, it's just always nice talking to somebody who kind of gets some of the stuff that I'm doing and. Just having a conversation with someone who's into the same thing um so yeah that was uh, that was one of my highlights of make essential having that conversation well i am thoroughly enthralled with your your photography and your eye um, Thank you. you the the of being able to see something and then translate it to an art form no matter what that art form is mm. uh, to me is what it's really that's what separates us as artists. Um, and for decades, I totally rejected that term. Um, but to be able to translate what we see into another form is, to me, that's what it's, this whole thing is about. Yeah. And that's why Nicola is a maker. I, I heard that Jamie Page where she said that she wasn't uh, a maker. And I, I called rubbish out yeah. loud. Out loud, I said, that's rubbish. I know, I know. I've said it to her so many times. She's a maker, she's creative. And just because she doesn't go and play around with table saws and lathes and band saws all day, doesn't mean that she's not uh, a maker. She, she, she's just a different medium. You just make things differently to, you know, how I make things, but yeah. you still, She's still an artist she's still a maker mm. so andy um i've been having a look um at some of the things that you've been doing you've made a beautiful quilt recently yeah. um you do photography you work in your shop um from very early in the morning um you've been working on a project for a church right uh doing those lovely pieces that i've seen on instagram 
um, and you were in Lancaster in the 1980s. Um, so that was quite uh, quite a spooky thing. <laughs> so um, talking about what you do as a maker and talking about you know you as an artist and it's about seeing stuff in a different way why do you make why do i make i i don't have a choice i have no choice i have to make um i can typically if i are going if i'm going on holiday i can i can do two days without making the third day hmm. uh i have to do something or i i start going a bit wonky um, cooking is a good release for me. I, I love to cook and I cook a lot. Um, so a lot of times if we're going on holiday, I will, uh, you know, we'll get a place that, that has its own kitchen. Yeah. So we'll do that. Photography helps me. Um, you know, for me, this is a whole life. This is my life. This is my world. It's what I am. It's what I do. It's what I'm passionate about. Um, I don't, I have no choice whatsoever and it keeps me off the wall of the post office. Uh, do you guys know what that means? No. In America, um, if you go into the post office, they have all the FBI's 10 most wanted list. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Pictures are on the wall of the post office so you can see them. But and I, I like to say that, uh, making keeps me off the wall of the post office. <laughs> <laughs> So how long have you been a maker? When did you start making? Mm, boy, kind of like Jamie, you know, it's it's hard to remember a time when it, it wasn't. We were always, uh, you know, stealing tools out of the garage and making tree forts and, um, you know, d getting into trouble, uh, doing things. So it was just always, I, I think the first thing that I remember making was I was about 10 or 11 and, um, and I had to, I had a lawn mowing business and I had to alter my bike to tow a, a lawn mower behind me so that I could pedal around and, and, uh, do that. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it's always been, uh, part and parcel of who I am, you know, my, uh, family uh they've gone different ways but i i've always had this bent of of just being uh tactily involved with my environment mm -hmm. and, and and i was uh five years behind my closest sibling so essentially i was an only child raised that way anyway so i spent a lot of time alone mm -hmm. and, um, and was always very comfortable being alone so mm. So when did you start um, making for a living? That would have been in 1983, I think. Uh, I got back from Europe and um, after a couple of, I tried to sell real estate. I got my license, which was in the States is kind of an arduous uh, testing that has to be done. Yeah. And uh, so I did that and had an illustrious career of about four months <laughs> before I realized that I absolutely hated it. And uh, I got, uh, I think I made $50 in, in uh, four months and uh, decided that I, I better reconnect uh, with what I really enjoyed doing very quickly. Yeah. Um, so I, I uh, became a carpenter's apprentice and uh, was instantly um, at home. Yeah. And, and I was very fortunate because I, uh, got onto a crew that was um, guys that I really looked up to and uh, we hung out a lot and we were best friends and sailed and hunted and fished and did everything together. Plus we worked, which is a very odd thing. But, but again, it kind of goes back to this. Um, that's your whole life, you know, of mm -hmm. being uh, either making or being around making people who made stuff um it, it's that, not that sense of community again that mm. you know it's but it's nice that 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 sense of community extended not just from the tools and the job for you it extended to uh the social network that it gave you and you know true true dear friends that you could rely on and look up to so Definitely. That's, that's 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 really really nice and i, th I think 
more more and more of us that are making now we're beginning to realize that a lot of the people that we're getting to know through the maker community are when when the chips are down a friend you could rely on right so but it's nice that you you sort of like started down that path at such a young age and it's mm. just it's i think it's probably gone a long way to help make you sort of like the guy you are and you know that yeah uh it's it certainly comes across that you know these friends that you had just hearing True. talking about it then they played an important part yeah, in yeah. your life and yeah. still do yeah definitely mm -hmm. and i think there's something very that you know as makers we we kind of take for granted but i think there is uh something that is really grounding about um making things with your hands and making things with a camera uh Nicola, that you and I can relate to, um, that you're very much more connected to the, the world around you mm. more than your average person who, you know, yeah. sales insurance or whatever. Um, not that there's anything in the world wrong with that, but um, this sense of connectivity and um, I, I just, uh, it's everything. It's absolutely everything to me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you because I find when I go and take pictures, the most common thing that people say to me is, I don't know how you see all this stuff or I don't know how you find it. But, you know, to me, it's it's almost in my face because I'm looking for it and I'm kind of tuned into it. But people would just walk past most of it. Um, and I think when I first really got into photography, um, and I was using my DSLR a lot. I used to go into Manchester, um, and if there were events on like um, a demonstration or Remembrance Sunday, I used to photograph those. So you ended up running around trying to get all your shots and um, sort of being a bit like the paparazzi. And there was a point where you'd kind of go into auto drive. It was like something clicked in your brain and everything else gets tuned out and you're right. almost in this state of flow. And it's, I got to the point where I could tell when it had happened. Um, and it's, so, I don't know, it's sort of, you're so connected with your camera and you're just seeing stuff and taking it. And it's that for me is one of the best feelings when you get into that state, you're just completely immersed in it. And I think that's sort of that connectivity as well. No, I have the very much the same. Um, I can I can reach that state in the shop and do frequently, especially when I'm doing the gothic stuff because it's very um, layered, mm -hmm. and you have to plan each layer before you start the first one. Um, but the camera um, lets me do that almost in a meditative state. Yeah, um, especially I was out the other day concentrating on the dew drops on a mushroom <laughs> at the break of day. They're in golden hour. Yeah. And I realized that I kind of lost myself in it. And then I realized how odd I must look being fully on the ground, complete uh, wet dew. I was soaked oh. from head to foot. But. I was inside of that little sphere mm. that, you know, was what a couple of millimeters across, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, I, I don't know. I love it because that's, you realize that a couple hours have gone away and, and, uh, <laughs> and you know, to me, it's a meditation. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. There's something very magical about it. Um, I, I've, I mean, I've loved photography since I was about nine and I got my first camera and back then it was film and, you know, I used to wait for the postman coming. Um, but when I got my digital camera and I could just come home and download everything, mm -hmm. that really transformed everything. Um, but, yeah, for me, it's um, photography is quite a magical process, really. It is. It's I, I often said is I'm not trying to document anything. I, I'm My job is not to be a photojournalist. My job is to translate something that I've seen 
and to use that to evoke emotion from the viewer. Mm. Very much like uh, the stuff I build for churches. Uh, if I do my job right, um, it's not that they're concentrating on the pieces that I built, but it shapes how they, um, you know, have a spiritual experience. Yeah. And to me, that's the best part about doing some of the work that I do is um, it's kind of a heavy, heavy deal, you know, that you think, uh, you know, people are going to be focused on this piece of furniture uh, during the high spots and low spots of their life, during funerals, during weddings, during uh, baby baptisms. That's that all happens around the stuff that I build. Mm -hmm. And uh, that to me is a heavy burden, but one that I, I just absolutely am fascinated by trying to perform well in. Mm -hmm. It's um, there's a guy that I mention quite a lot. Um, he's called Andy, Andy Marshall, and he does um, architectural photography and he talks about genius okay. So he goes to a lot of these really old churches in the UK and um, some of them are not used anymore. And he takes lots of pictures or it might be a church that is being sort of protected and he'll take a series of pictures. But he very much focuses on the artisans who built that church, you know, the people who maybe created the pews and the the frames and the, what do you call those partitions? They have those big partitions, don't they? Um, right. And the fonts and things like that. Yeah, that um, just awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're doing a very similar thing. And, you know, imagine in 200 years' time, somebody looking at your stuff and wondering who made it and all that energy that you've put into it. That's quite something to kind of be doing. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's not for everybody, I'll put it that way, because there's a lot of politics in the church that you have to deal with. But more than that, it's I've always kind of existed um, after my apprenticeship in uh, construction and, and carpentry. I gravitated more towards um, art type of projects in my carpentry. So I have kind of existed in this gray world between uh, trades and art. The art guys don't really like me because I don't have, you know, a formal training in it. Uh -huh. And the 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 uh trades guys you know there's just too much art talk <laughs> you know so i live i've i've lived in this weird world you know yeah yeah and um and, and one thing that the maker community has given me is the ability to just you know stare into a camera and say i'm an art guy yeah um which for years i i couldn't do that i i didn't i wasn't comfortable calling myself an artist or uh -huh. um so yeah, it's it's just weird. Uh, it's a responsibility that I take very very seriously, and I I try to. I'm not a very um, formal type of guy in my personal life, but in the formality of of uh, the spaces that I work in and the stuff that I build, I take that very seriously. Mm. Well, you've got that. Well, you you've got that respect. Uh, you know for. Not not just the church, but I suppose again, a respect for the 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 craftsmen that went before you, and exactly. and you're walking in their footsteps now, and you know you're perpetuating, like Nicola said, uh, their story and bringing new life into these amazing historic places of worship. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe in God or not, you cannot help but be moved and feel a shiver when you walk into a cathedral or a huge, beautiful church and you've got all that beautiful wood, the carving, the stained glass, the marble, you know, uh, the brass work, you know, the gold leaf mm -hmm. and the gilting, you know, you cannot it's, forget the religion part. And I know right. that's very important to a lot of people, millions, but, you, you, you know. It's the energy. It's the energy. It? It, it's right. the energy. And you can, you can feel uh you can feel the energy of yeah. the the congregation and the craftsmen it's all it's all you can feel it it's, there's a right. 
is that buzz genius when genius word kind. Yeah, you walk <laughs> into a church or a cathedral or a place of worship yeah. and you know and I I when I walk into a church now and I'm blind, I shiver. Right. From the energy in there and the smell of the wood mm -hmm. and the metal work and it's it's really it's weird, it's spooky, but such a great feeling at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. Right. That's uh, that is successful design to me, mm. especially Gothic uh, architecture. From the very get-go, yeah. it was meant to give that feeling to people that had no concept of what the church was trying to sell, of this concept of God. Shock and awe, man. Right, exactly. It's exactly what it is. Mm. And from the, the way the noise resonates in those buildings... Um, and like you say, the smells, the the full sensory experience yeah. to me is just, uh, I love it. I love trying to recreate it. I love trying to get there mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, younger buildings that we have here. Yeah. Um, I, I have told a story that uh, we were working in a church and had just finished a, a screen, a Gothic screen that was about 30 feet tall. And we were working on the back side of it. Mm -hmm. And the church was open and some some ladies came in and we heard one of them say to the other, it's so nice that they didn't tear any of this beautiful woodwork out of here. Mm -hmm. And we had just installed it. Yeah. And yeah. to me, that that was the highest compliment that yeah. uh, that we can, you know, because it's not it's weird because it's not about me or the shop it's it's really in those spaces it's really all about that emotion and that yeah. what'd you call it chris not the creepy feeling but the what you called it something what was it just now uh um, what, the shiver the shiver yeah yeah that's it's all about the shiver you know yeah yeah, um, yeah. that's brilliant brilliant stuff <laughs> mm. so um the things that you've made have you got anything that really stands out or is a favorite of um, things that you've made? You know, I made a uh, 10 foot tall tabernacle mm -hmm. uh, that was gold leafed and, and kind of a crazy piece of uh, furniture that um, that uh, was one of those ones where I'm, you know, multiple times during the build, I'm nearly on the verge of tears because I have no idea where I'm going with it and uh, I, I had a really cool experience in Florence, Italy. Uh, I was reading the diaries of Bruno Lesci, who was the architect who invented the dome. Right. This guy changed <laughs> architecture forever by inventing the dome. And I was reading his diaries and he's basically, you know, all those feelings that we have where we're inadequate, we have no idea what we're doing, we're frauds, all that stuff, he is written, written down in his diaries. Wow. So that was a really cool experience for me to go, okay, wait a minute, maybe I'm not quite the basket case that I feel like I am sometimes. That, um, but yeah, some of those pieces, the, the tabernacle is the holiest spot in a Catholic church. I mean, it is it is the concentrated holiness or whatever you call it. So it's it's a it's a big responsibility to do that well oh. and and you know to make something worthy of that. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So um, you've mentioned a little bit about the the maker community. Um, what difference does it make to you being part of this wider community? Is it is it important to you? Has it been um, interesting connecting with other people? Yeah, the the community gave me joy. Uh, <laughs> I I was very much four four or five years ago uh, when I got recruited into one of the groups. Um, I was just I was just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, paying rent. Uh, I, I was in my shop and I was making, but I had lost the joy and, and I was kind of drifting into that middle-aged cranky old guy of, you know, no one after I'm gone, 
no one is going to be able to do what I do. And, and uh, no one wants to learn. No one wants to do the work to learn. All those things where you're kind of sliding into old guyness. Mm. Um, all of a sudden, that it wasn't allowed because there were people that enjoyed what I was doing and they wanted to learn what I was doing and they understood for once in my life, somebody understood the weird little kid that is Andy in the back of art class. Yeah. You know, um, so to me, it was all of a sudden this mind blowing thing of, wow, I here, here's my tribe. Here's people yeah. who understand me, you know, and I don't know. I, they gave me the joy of, of making back, which I, I will never be able to repay that debt. Mm. Yeah, it's, cool. it, we say it every time because obviously we ask people who are on the same questions and, um, you know, we say every time how amazing the maker community is. And um, it's, it's, it is unlike anything else we know, isn't it? And Yeah, it's, it, it is a truly, truly wonderful community. And, uh, you get, you get, now I, I don't like using the word excited because it's not good for my anxiety levels. I try to keep my excitement levels in check. Uh, but if I could, if I can think of another word, I get so uh, enthused. enthused at the thought of either hanging out with, you know, you guys at an exhibition or hanging out like this now on the podcast. It's like, Oh, I can't, I can't wait. And oh, we've got a podcast tonight. And oh, I've got a demo this weekend. Or, you know, uh, there's Maker Central. Or it's like, it really is. Uh, it helps you focus so much. Uh, and it, it, it's, it, it truly is uh, a very, very, it's all happy memories for me. Because yeah. my being blind every second of my day is a memory. Right. In, that's the best way to sort of like describe being blind. You know, it's not sort of like you're living an eternal memory. Uh, and yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't wish for you know much better memories than what I get from the makers. Very cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Very cool. Right, I'm just going to have a quick look at some of the comments because people have been saying things. Um, <laughs> I always do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leona said, "Great to see a smiley Berkey on a Monday evening." Hi, Leona. Um, Andy Pugh, hashtag actual moron. Um, uh, Steve Twydell, Andy can speak using photographs. He's fudging awesome. Jake <laughs> said amen to that. Yeah. Um, everyone is going to see why I have Andy's logo on my leg. Uh, <laughs> uh, question yeah. for Andy from Steve Twydell. Does he have a vision in mind before taking his photographs or does he shoot what is in front of him and then decide how to present them afterwards? Uh, definitely, I don't have any agenda. The, 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 actually, the whole thing is, for me, uh, photography, especially in the early mornings, is going out to find what the world is going to give me. Um, because a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll be set up and ready to go with, um, a sun for the sunrise. I'm studying clouds and, and trying to figure out, you know, how they're going to light up according to the elevations of the clouds, um, and try to see if I can get a tree, you know, to line up with clouds and the sunrise and do that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden I'll turn around and there's, uh, dew drops that are completely demanding my attention and I forget all about the clouds and the trees and everything else and oh. head in a different direction. Yeah. To me, that's a, it's a, it's a total metaphor for the way I want to live my life. And that is just it's to be moment. entirely in the moment. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, I now, uh, over the past 10 years or so, I've studied a lot of Buddhist philosophy oh. and that it, it that made me a much better photographer. And that is just having no preconceived ideas. I don't want to 
force my way into a photograph. I don't want to like jam content into my lens. I, I want to turn around and um, I did a picture, I think it was last weekend or the weekend before, where Fiona, all of a sudden, I was totally concentrated on something else and Fiona walked beside a large mud puddle and the reflection was perfect. And I, and I knew I had a limited amount of time before she would start doing something else. But to try to capture as much of that and frame it quickly and, and do all that to me was just, again, we're talking about flow state. This, mm. There's nothing else going on in my world. And, you know, I, I worry. I worry about design. I worry about stuff that I'm building in the, in the shop. And to have that totally gone for, um, you know, a, an hour or two hours, mm. that's to me is, it's just absolute, complete and total magic. Yeah. Do you ever see anything uh, when you're out and you just go, oh, my God, I've just got to photograph that. You know, you see something and it's just that the light coming through the trees or something. And it's just so amazing. Yeah. Um, I get that sometimes. And you just you just can't wait to photograph it. And it's like, oh, I've got to get it. I can't let that slip away or the light change. And um there's kind of that urgency sometimes I find yeah. well. And I, I, I like that part because I think as adults, we tend to um, say someday I should make art or, so, you know, someday I should make something. Mm. Uh, I would be making something if I wasn't so busy. <laughs> to me, this is a great uh, example of no, no, do it now or you don't get it. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, and light, light is magical that way um mm. look it's right right now either you prioritize your art right now or you don't yeah and it's as simple as that and yeah. when i do you know in my day-to-day -day, uh shop type stuff if i'm off to you know meet with a client or whatever uh, i always allow 15 minutes um ahead of when i should arrive mm -hmm. Um, to allow for those moments where, where I can uh, stop the van middle of the day and, um, you know, and really attack a visual that, that has presented itself. Yeah. It's, it's a really high priority for me. Yeah. I spent too many years not doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. Cause I, I've, I've been in my car sometimes, you know, going to um, a work meeting and you see something, you think, oh, that make a fantastic picture. But I can't stop because I'm going to my meeting. <laughs> the number of times that I've done that, and it's so sad because, you know, that they were, I've, you know, I've seen like sunrises and just, I don't know, just different things that you see. And or yeah. you can see a, a really nice um, old fence by the side of a field and it just looks perfect. And. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. Now, I also do this is I have stocked uh, what I call stocked a tree. Um, <laughs> I knew I wanted to take a proper picture of this tree. I think I stocked it for three or four years before I had the right light, the right setting, the right atmospheric conditions, everything but I would look at that tree over and over. And uh, I have a net, I had a nephew who I said something about this tree to him. We walked by it and I said, someday I will take the correct picture of that tree, but it took four or five years. Yeah. 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 Barnes, barns are that way for me too. <laughs> I, I have a database in my mind of barns, old barns that, <laughs> I wait. I just wait for the right conditions, the right cloud bank behind them. Yeah, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. How did Andy get his first job carving? <laughs> Who's who asked that one? JP Woodwork, and he <laughs> says, "Being a Wolves fan, you'd think you'd be used to being alone." <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> no, the carving, the carving uh, issue is kind of funny because um, I, 
said that I could do a, a large Gothic uh, furniture suite for a church before I knew how to carve. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was uh, committed to about a quarter million dollars worth of contracts and I had no <laughs> skill set to do it with. Uh, so I had to uh, jump off and uh, get some intense schooling uh, very quickly for a couple of weeks. And, uh, and then I came back and had a, a basic idea of what I was doing. But yeah, it was very much panic driven uh, learning to carve because wow. I was too That's stupid cool. to know better. <laughs> That's what you call winging it. Very much so. That's what Very much a learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Panic does does uh, absolute magic for a learning curve, doesn't it? Yeah. It yeah. Does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's kind of like, uh, hey, can you fly this plane? The pilot just keeled over. Yeah, I I definitely can learn how to fly this plane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Let's have a look. Um, strings and blings jen's woodworking and things says first time i've seen everyone so busy listening and watching that they aren't chatting <laughs> um when is the bacon report coming back <laughs> I, I i had a uh, is that jamie also yeah <laughs> i had a a uh five minute spot on the local radio station uh, for a year and a half, uh, five minutes every Friday morning uh, mm -hmm. talking about bacon as if it was the <laughs> one and only thing in my entire world. And it was the only reason I got up in the morning and uh, I was, uh, my name was the bacon master. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, for a year and a half, every Friday I talked for ba about bacon for five minutes. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you, Andy, you have smoked some bad granola, mate. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, you would have no idea, my friend. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> JP says, seeing Andy in his element at Canterbury Cathedral was incredible. <laughs> yeah. That's... Yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah, definitely a, a WTF moment, was it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's um, those are those are my those are my happy places. I I just don't. Again, it, it's that uh, sensory overload, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I, I can't imagine, of course, Chris, you know, losing one of my senses. But in those places, it's coming at you from every direction. So yeah. it's um, it's remarkable. It's a remarkable transcendent thing for me. Yeah, yeah it is, mm. yeah. Um, Steve Twydell, um, he said, would Andy like to be part of the Notre Dame rebuild? Yes. <laughs> I'll have to think about it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, um, when uh, the afternoon that it burned, um, I, I was on my couch in tears, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, and I wandered after an hour or two watching it. I, I could, I couldn't do it anymore. I had to, the loss. Uh, it was like uh, I cried more for that than some of my family members, to be honest. Uh -huh. um, so I went back out to the shop, and my wife came home from work. And before I could say anything, she said, "In case you're wondering, yes." And they said, what? She said, if we need to move to Paris, yes, I'm in. Oh. <laughs> it was like, so, yeah, no, I would, uh, that would be, uh, uh, you know, it, it would be, to me, it would be one of those things that you've prepared yourself for 35 years mm. to be ready for something like that, mm. to have that actual honor. Yeah. yeah. To just have people think that I would be interested in going to me is an honor, but yeah, I would, I would be there so quickly if that <laughs> would be, would be funny. Mm. I used to sit in Notre Dame when I lived in Paris, I used to go and sit in there, um, you know, in between, in between classes and stuff. Um, it was a place that I used to go in a lot. Um, it's, um, 
yeah it's i don't know it's, one of a kind yeah it? it is one of a kind and yeah. um again a very successful design that you want to go and just be there yeah just feel the the feelings the yeah. it's just a place that there's the history is alive there you know yeah. all those souls that built the place and the history that's happened there is all still there oh. it's yeah it's uh, uh remarkable uh chris cute says i love andy there i said it and i'm not ashamed <laughs> uh, i love you too brother uh, too uh, much. <laughs> let me see where am i uh, um would you ever try to build a miniature model of one of the churches you have visited that's dave the wood barber ah uh, you know uh, I guess in some of the furniture pieces, um, they are basically scaled down architectural models. Um, but as far as, to me, uh, part of the thrill of what I do is the scale that you have to compete with how big the room is. Yeah. And you have to take that scale into consideration to make it visually correct. Um, because it can't be too little or it looks like a Barbie doll house. Yeah, yeah. And it can't be too big because it's competing with the real stuff that's happening in the room. So it has to be just right. And to me, finding that proportion and that scale is is part of the challenge. So, um, so I hadn't thought about doing a miniature, no. Um. I'm just seeing if there's any more questions there's loads of comments on here um right if, if anybody's got any questions that i've not asked um just stick them on the end and i'll try and catch them all so um i'm not sure whether we've covered some of this but um what sort of things do you really love making if you can just do something for yourself what what would you love to do Boy, um, you know, I, I, I like venturing into art stuff because I don't know fine art stuff because I don't know what I'm doing. And I, I really enjoy digging the um, chasing the, the newbie feeling, mm. that, that feeling of, of being unsure and, and being bad and being terrible at what you're doing. <laughs> because to me, it's, it's very freeing because in my work, I don't have the luxury of not producing something worthy of the contract, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it has to be as close to perfect or perfect as I can make it to be able to uh, paint on canvas or put mosaics and potholes out in front of my house. Mm -hmm. It's bad. It's bad. Technically it's terrible work, but that's, incredibly liberating to me and and just like a a mind-blowing um i don't know i just love that part where you're just exploring something um and then it comes out halfway decent and you go <laughs> i i can't believe i did that you know yeah. that's i like that that joy of of uh exploration yeah that's pretty cool yeah yeah very I cathartic yeah, yeah, I think as well, it's like that. Um, you can get held back a lot by perfectionism. Um, and if you can get past that, then you can actually do something. And it's it's like I'm finding it. The True minute. perfection has to be imperfect. You know, you know, this I am fascinated that you brought that up, Chris, because I was this morning thinking about this. I am obsessing about um, a, a little what they call them crockets. There's the little details in Gothic uh, furniture that literally are the size of how, how many centimeters is that? 472. Okay. 472. So the size of a coin, this little thing is right. right. And, and I'm 
in this thing deep in my head. And then I have to take a step back and say, this thing is going to be 20 feet in the air. This isn't perfect. This, this shouldn't be perfect because it doesn't matter. Mm. Right. It's perfect enough for the distance that it will be seen from. Mm. So in reality, I would argue that that's perfection. Yeah. That's why I've always said on these big scale pieces, um, if a guy makes a cutting board that feels brilliant, that to me, that those kind of things that people interact with very closely, mm. uh, the turning, the bowls, you know, the bowls and uh, little uh, cutting boards and things like that. You've got nowhere to hide on those things because people are not only looking at them as close as they can, they're touching them. Mm. They're, they're smelling them. It's, it's, they are fully involved with it where the things that I build, the big ones, it's like shock and awe. There's so much detail yeah. and so yeah. much scale that people, you know, they get knocked back. So the reality of it is, is you can get away with bloody murder yeah. if the visual's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I have so much respect for you guys that make th these things that people handle, hmm. you, 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 know, is, you know, especially the guys that little sell them at, you know, like craft fairs and things, because people are coming up to the booth inspecting your work to find something wrong with it yeah. <laughs> to see if it's worth their money. Right. It's just such a different interaction from the stuff that I build. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, but you're right. As soon as as soon as something comes off a wood turning lathe and you've got an audience there and they're going, Oh, great, great, but you can <laughs> you can hear them all critiquing it. Exactly. You know? uh, and and uh, or you can sense them critiquing it and you know, it's oh, like yes. first yes. first thing they'll do is feel it, they'll flip it upside down and you know, that's why I, I never, ever leave the bottom of my bowls or anything I make because first thing they do is flip it upside down because they're just <laughs> they're waiting for you to fail. Right. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the only worse critic than them is is ourselves. Exactly. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm definitely my own worst critic. Um, I think nobody else can be as critical of my stuff as I am and, and that's why it's good when I do a piece uh, uh you know well if it's a commission you know Nicola will look over it and say yeah that's that's amazing and yeah it's good to go luckily I I haven't had a moment where Nicola says no do it again uh it's the the only so like the thing where I might slip up is when I've made a pen for somebody and I've pushed the parts together with the pen press you know, uh, Nicola might say, oh, right, because you can push pen parts together just a bit too uh, keenly and you can split the wood because the wall of the, the thickness of the wood can be that thick, thin around uh -huh. the glass tube. So I'm also sort of like cautious and every now and then on a very rare occasion, Nicola will say, oh, that, that metal part isn't quite touching the wood. So I'll take it back to the workshop and just give it a little bit more of a nudge just to close that gap. Mm. But uh, with regards to sort of like my main turnings and uh, bowls and goblets and mm. candlesticks, you know, not once has Nicola had to say, don't like it, do it again. <laughs> so that's cool. But she looks, and she looks really hard. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just I've, I've, uh, I've always, that's it. And, you know, I don't bring it up out of the workshop until I think it's right anyway. Mm. Sort of hedging my bets a bit. <laughs> you, well, you cover your butt is what you do. <laughs> yeah, covering my ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, now this could be quite an interesting question. Tell oh. me something that the maker community doesn't know about you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what oh you've got this huge list. <laughs> they, they know quite a bit. We'll put it that way. Um, I don't know. I, I actually was thinking about this um, earlier today because I 
I thought, oh, God, you know, they know I've stolen a car. They know I tried to sneak into East Germany in 1981. Uh, they know a little bit about uh, the poorly fashioned smuggling career. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm very grateful for what I get to do for a living. And one of the reasons why I don't believe I've shared with the community before um, I did a, a, a few weeks work in Haiti back in the mid eighties. Right. Um, and I was helping to build a community center in this very small village. And, uh, one day I was at a Saturday market, um, in a small, small, like little village. And, uh, I saw just these, um, guys that their job was guys would kill um slit the throat of a goat mm. and they would pull it over to um these guys that would sit by the river and my thought was oh okay these guys job would be to gut you know take all the guts out of the goat and get it ready for marketing but what i realized is this guy's job was to take um, the skin off the goat and how he would do it is make a small slice with a knife down by the Achilles tendon of the goat. Mm -hmm. And he would start to blow air between the skin and the meat mm -hmm. with his mouth. And then when he would get a little pocket of air, he would beat on the skin so that it would move the air further. And then he would basically inflate this goat so that then they could take and skin it and and basically the skin would fall right off of it and they could use the hide for some things and then they, they'd had a fully skinned goat to sell for meat but that was this guy's job all the time mm. was blowing air between you know yeah. into a goat and and i just it's it's always stuck with me that you know, we get whiny about how we have to work so hard to make a living and do this rubbish work sometimes. And, ah, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not having to do that for, for a living. And uh, I just, it's just a little bit of perspective for me yeah. that I think about every once in a while that, that few weeks that I spent in Haiti uh, was really changed how I see the world. And, um, how, how I just, how I view generosity there. These people have nothing in the world and they are in my 58, 57 years, I've never met anybody even remotely as generous um, as those people were. Mm. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's about the only thing that I could come up with that, uh, that cool story, huh? with the community about my, uh, past uh indiscretions put it that way <laughs> that's cool um anybody got anything they'd like to ask um andy before we go any further um, i'm just waiting to see if there's any questions um have you got anything else you'd like to add uh oh is oh Ah. What, what, all right, I'll ask you then. What is your what's your favorite English meal? Oh, it, it, it's whatever's got custard on it, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, going to the school that I went to, you know, you had the same dessert three mm -hmm. times, just different amounts of custard on it every time. Oh, yeah. So, drier that the cake got the more custard they would fill the dish with so all right all right <laughs> i always i always thought you was a spotted dick man <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go to town on some spotted dick there's no doubt about it yeah 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 <laughs> um andy Pugh said um when is andy going to put his photos and thoughts into a book that is actually something that's under consideration right right now um, we're, uh, kind of that, you know, just the fact that 
I know I know you've got one definite confirmed sale here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, just the fact that uh, you know, being an, a completely untrained and self-taught photographer, especially, um, you know, how cool is this community that you get that kind of positive uh, reinforcement? And, and uh, I was shocked and um at uh the the uh, make makers uh auction for mckenna um you know one of my photographs sold in that that i was amazed um uh, that that it would sell for what it did and i don't know i mean you know i'm, I'm getting used to that idea of something that I do very selfishly as a meditative practice. Uh -huh. The fact that those images um, influence people and they appreciate them enough to, to want to see them published is just completely humbling to me. So, yeah. um, well, I'm going to look forward to that. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, I'll, when it comes out, I'll buy that for you, Nicola. <laughs> Um, JP says, what's a L-U-T-E-S? Lutz? What's a Lutz? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is a good question. Um, are you guys familiar with, with Bill Lutz at all? No, no, I don't know. He was one of the, he and I came into the maker community uh, about the same time. And um, we met early on. He's from California but um, visited Illinois and, and we got together. But Bill Lutz is a very special, um, a guy who, who's been through a lot in his life and has come, come through it and kind of come through this conduit of making also um, with an amazing attitude and, and um, just a great take on life. And he's a member of, uh, uh, reclaimed audio podcast um and is just an outstanding human being and, mm. and just all the love in the world for bill lutes we'll have to look him up yeah, yeah you do we start, yeah. yeah yeah very special <clears throat> um jp says who's next to be interrogated uh when will the maker interrogations begin again chris cute that makes sense to you. <laughs> what was that? Yes, it does. Um, randomly, uh, the first time I met Bill Lutz, uh, I tied him to a chair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Put him under some very bright lights, and we oh. filmed a one-take uh, in maker interrogation. Uh, but we did it in one take. Uh, I had asked... Um, several people and this is years ago this was in 2015 i think it was but i started a group chat and said you know i'm here's what i'm thinking of doing give me your questions and so i had a, a page full of questions that i just fired interrogation style at, at this guy strapped to a chair and um and in one take we shot this video and uh mm -hmm. so they've they've taken on some They've evolved a little bit since then, but they're they're yeah. quite funny. And, uh, and then actually, I got the tables turned on me, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I spent a scary evening um, being uh, waterboarded and uh, oh. tied up, and and they they got a. That's why I don't have a lot of things that the maker community doesn't doesn't uh, know about me, because uh, I've been interrogated heavily uh, under duress. So. Wow. <laughs> We've had a lot of good fun with it. What has the maker community given you? <laughs> nightmares, freaking nightmares. Exactly. Oh my God. I'll never sleep an entire night through again. <laughs> oh. Leona says um, the Berkey Twydell photo poetry book needs to happen for sure. Yeah, that that um, that's another book, I think. Yeah. <laughs> very uh the the possibility of that happening is uh, i'm i'm very again just 
really humbled and, and excited about that one because yeah. that could be, that's a skill set I have, I don't have at all. And to be able, and I hope I'm not giving anything away on uh, Steve, but the concept would be to just take w one of my pictures that I think would be a good poem, mm -hmm. give it to him, and then the poem would be his first reaction to the photograph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's pretty raw. Yeah. Um, because again, if it's a successful photograph, it evokes an emotion and a reaction. So, <clears throat> so I'm hoping that this collaboration could be really interesting mm. and that he could take it completely 180 degrees of what I would think. But the simple fact, of the matter is his reaction will be fascinating. So I think, um, I hope, like I said, I hope I'm not giving too much away here, but that's kind of what we're, we're yeah. uh, scheming. Yeah, yeah, that sounds really cool. And it would be really interesting as well for him to look at photographs and actually come back with a very similar response to it that you had as well. Um, that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really cool project. Well... I think um, we're kind of probably at the end of Make a Monday segment. Yes. It's honestly, Andy, it's been an absolute joy to have you on our podcast. And I could talk to you all day and rabbit on about photography. photography. <laughs> no, Chris, Chris has been sitting here rolling his eyes for 45 minutes. Oh, no, it's all right. No, no. no I haven't. I've, I found, and you know, it's every single one of our guests has been so interesting, uh, and uh, it's it's been amazing having every single guest. Uh, but I think tonight has been a very special one for Nicola with that, you know, talking about the photography and things. Yeah. Like that. So uh, no, it's it's been an absolute joy, and you are an absolute, you're a star. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, yeah, flipping out. Thank you guys. It just you guys uh it's just been such a pleasure getting to know you and um you know I'm we'll, so glad we'll get... you came to make us central <laughs> yeah sorry i'm so glad you came to make us yeah. central yeah big time that yeah. was huge and, and big uh i gotta give a lot of credit for jamie to help helping me out he, he and jake uh escorted me around and and made sure that i didn't blow anything up or <laughs> get arrested so you see I'd, I'd have paid to hear you blow something up personally <laughs> that's why you know my wife has forbid me to ever hang out with uh giaco i can't i can't go visit giaco because she's afraid that the two of us will <laughs> explode each other so all right cool <laughs> <laughs> she saw one of his videos from years ago and she said you know what don't you can never go hang out with that guy <laughs> <All right. laughs> have been imposed yeah. Yeah. So, um, we'll we'll finish our Make a Monday segment here, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're more than welcome to stay. We're just going to chat now about the past week, um, and um, anything you want to chip in, that's that's fine. But Perfect. thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Yeah. Please, any any time, I would love to revisit it. Uh, this it's been an absolute joy thank well, you we'd, we'd, love, we'll, we'd love to have you back so uh enjoy the rest of the podcast enjoy the rest of your day my friend uh, and until the next time uh, stay naughty <laughs> we'll yeah, stay, stay weird yes <laughs> no choice thanks guys so much thanks everybody in the chat love you dudes thank yeah, you. Andy. well that was that was uh <laughs> flipping heck yeah it's such an amazing interesting uh life you yeah. know and you know uh obviously an amazing craftsman and uh an artist well so right well how, so how do we, we talk that this week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well i think we should start with your big news first what's my big news um i don't know what is your big news christopher you've been bad haven't you i've been naughty today uh i've been threatening for a while but i've been forward a bit can they see it I your ear. Now you can see it. I got my ear pierced today. 
because I was feeling particularly naughty, like Andy. So <laughs> I, I got my I got my ear pierced cut just because. Uh, you could. Because I could, and I thought, yeah, I'm going to get my ear pierced, and it's that whole, you know, uh, bad, bad, to the bone. bad to the bone, and you know, not wanting to conform to anyone's rules, and you know, <laughs> loving the heavy metal and the motorcycles, and uh, that warrior, that warrior thing, and the Viking ancestry and all that. So yeah, I thought, screw this. So I got my ear pierced today. Uh, yeah, and I thoroughly, uh, thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Didn't feel it. Just like someone just pinching your ear, really, between the fingertips. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bada bing, bada boom. Ten seconds, job done. So, uh, yeah, I got my ear pierced today. So that's it's not really the big news. But, uh, yeah, so actually the guy that did it in the uh, the tattoo and piercing parlour. Yeah, called holier Hol than that. Holier than now, I think. It's a very sort of like goth place. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, the guy said, let me just ask you. He says, are you blind, blind? So I said, yeah, I'm totally blind. He says, well, I won't bother to ask you to stand in front of the mirror and ask you what you think of it then. <laughs> so, no, don't waste your time. So, uh, yeah, even though I will never see it, I know I've got my ear pierced. So that's kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, so that's what we did today. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. the city centre of Manchester. Well, we'd gone for a meeting, we'd gone haven't for, we? We met, yeah. went to meet a man yeah. um, who we know from... Well, I he was um, someone that I've done some work... Well, not exactly done some work with. He's not exactly a client, but kind of. Um, and um, we we know him about YouTube stuff because he was a YouTube ambassador yeah, for a while. Was, yeah, he was a, a YouTube ambassador. Uh, so we just went for a catch-up, really, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, his channel is um, relaxation for dogs and cats. Yeah. He's... So he's got, I think he's got, I don't know, 400 odd thousand subscribers on that, I think. Yeah. But um, uh, it's, I think, you know, apart from that, it's, you know, how successful his, uh, his music and, and things for yeah, animals and worldwide. dogs. Yeah. So there's a couple of global brands that are after him now and he's uh, going to, relocate to LA for a while isn't he in September yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, like like most things uh, the Americans seem to you know <laughs> get very passionate about most things and yeah. they, they love the, their animals and dogs like you know a lot of people do uh, but it's like the wood turning and the woodworking and things like that you know America seems to be the epicenter mm. of most things and it sounds like he's going to relocate to LA for a while to uh really really start networking big with some uh big names in the animal and pet industry yeah so that's cool so yeah it was great so yeah we've had a frantic week really yeah well, we've got another frantic week haven't we but last uh obviously the the podcast from last week was a bit late going up due to technical glitches yeah we had well, to we... get in touch with uh our broadband provider and yeah. it boosted it and things like that we live in a bit of a, uh, a, a a black spot area don't we when it comes to well we ran out of time because we recorded it didn't we mm -hmm. um was it on the sunday before we were traveling yeah yeah and i just couldn't get it all done in time and then we went to north wales and then mm. i don't know what we did on the tuesday but we just ended up busy and it mm. took me most of the week to get it sorted um, but anyway, last week's is live as well. Yeah, so uh, that was last Sunday, the podcast before we travelled. Yeah. So we travelled to North Wales, uh, an area uh, known as Mould, and that's M-O-L-D, uh, and D-Side. Uh, so last Monday, so a week ago today, uh, I did two demonstrations. One of them was early doors, and we were at the the community centre where I did the demo at eight o'clock in the morning setting up. So, which was pretty, pretty strange to be setting up at eight o'clock on a Monday morning. You know, you don't really mind it so much at a weekend. You expect that, well, especially an all day demo, but you know, the start of the week, eight o'clock in the morning. So that, that, but it was a great demo, loved it. Great crowd. Uh, and then later on that same day in the evening, we had, Demo number two. So the first one was in mold. The second demo 
about five miles away in D side, and that was our third visit to the D side demo. Uh, yeah. So that went really, really well, and those those guys uh, at the D side demo, they're a bunch of nutters, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. So uh, that was funny. Two great demos. Uh, got all the projects finished that I wanted to do. Uh, well, you made a Nicola ball, didn't you, on Monday morning? And they've kept that, and they're going to raffle yeah. it off to raise money for guide dogs. Yeah. Uh, which was really nice of them. And then the second demonstration, uh, that was a a sort of like a uh, a pot, a turn pot, and a power carved and uh, embellished the outside, but left the inside natural mm. uh so that was a nice little project that downstairs <laughs> and then what else did we do last week it was um, more tidy. getting stuff ready really yeah um, more 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 tidying up but also getting stuff ready for our third demo of the week <laughs> which was in uh north shields newcastle upon tyne up there up, yeah. up, up in the north uh so that was this saturday and that was an axminster store demo and that was an awesome turnout yeah uh it sounded like every seat had been taken people were stood there and quite a lot of disabled uh people had come to listen uh one lad who was uh knocked down by a car some years ago called steve yeah uh, and he was left for dead uh, ended up losing a leg and he's because of the neurological damage he's now losing his eyesight so he's he's just taken up wood turning so uh he and was, that was through amble men's sheds amble men's sheds which is an organization uh and it's not like a collab between ex veterans yeah uh but they're not just going to help and assist uh veterans that are disabled but uh, uh people from civilian life with a disability mm. so it's a, it's a good collab between the military ex-military and civ civilians uh to get making stuff so this lad called steve in a wheelchair one leg now going blind uh he'd come and listen so we, i was giving him some hints and tips about uh turning with no eyesight he has got some vision left i don't know how long he's going to have that mm. vision for but you know it, at least he'll uh have some infinite information and the perspective from a blind it's great you know getting instruction from a sighted turn of course it is but you know he's going blind uh, and only i can tell him really what he needs to know uh if i can put it that way so that was cool so that was an all-day demo great great hospitality by the axminster crowd and i got to demo on one of the new craft lathes uh, that Axminster have brought out, and it was the AC355, uh, a very, very nice little machine. So mm. uh, they've uh, pe people think that all they've done is stick a new label on, which one comment I heard a bit back, they said, oh, gosh, you know, they stuck a new label on the machines and uh, put the price up. Let me tell you, they haven't. <laughs> the machines are... Uh, the the sort of like uh the castings a lot better they've got improved power improved features they've been better thought out uh and that one that i i used it had a one horsepower motor uh variable speed forward and reverse <laughs> uh nice good swing over the bed probably about 14 inches something similar to mine mm -hmm. uh very capable machine and i turned that on on the 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 metal legs that you can by separate it can be bench mounted loved it great machine uh, and it handled everything really well nice and quiet quiet as well wasn't it nice and quiet very stable mm. uh, it's about 500 pounds that machine yeah I think so, it's 499. so for 500 pounds you're getting a very very good entry level lathe there uh, i was massively impressed in fairness i didn't think it'd be that good but you're almost getting what would have been classed as a trade machine a few years back there. Mm. Uh, those sort of features and its its weight and its sturdiness. Uh, very good. So, yeah, great demo. So I did some power carving and texturing and did a goblet, but the goblet was just left all natural. The first 
project was given away to Sharon and Dan, a couple that have just bought their first lathe. And they lent you their legs. Yeah, I wasn't going to say that. But, <laughs> uh, they did. Yeah, they, they lent us the legs to oh, the lathe. Oh, they're on. Um, Sharon and Dan. <laughs> yeah. Hi, it's Sharon and Dan from North Shields. <laughs> Just talking about you two. Uh, what a lovely couple you were. And yeah, I gave the first project to Sharon and Dan because when we arrived at North Shields on the Friday, they were having their free uh, introductory lesson to wood turning because they purchased the lathe. Yeah. So uh, they were in uh, the capable hands of Nathan there having uh, yeah a good sort of like one-to-one. -one. So a lovely couple. So the first project we gifted to them uh, and they were there all day Yeah. Uh, and Dan stayed behind so he could take his legs home. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, what had happened was uh, Axminster thought they'd had uh, for their sort of like in-store demonstration model, they thought they had some legs for that Yeah. Uh, and for somehow uh, they, they hadn't turned up or they weren't there. So uh, luckily Sharon and Dan graciously said oh you can borrow our legs <laughs> sounds strange saying that oh you can use our legs but uh yeah because the otherwise would have had to have turned it on a bench and it was way too high the spindle yeah was you know they say with your with your arm at right angles the, the spindle should be roughly in line with your elbow this was about six inches higher than that i'd have had to have stood on a stood on something mm. for it to have been comfortable and then you've got the health and safety police would have gone nuts uh so yeah thank you very much sharon and dan and it was great talking yeah. to you lovely lovely couple uh and uh dan is a, a woodworker anyway and that's his job he's in the trades and he works with wood uh as his day job so i'm sure you know they're making amazing things yeah pretty quickly yeah uh, just sorry that the uh, the legs got so dusty <laughs> yeah but you spent half an hour cleaning them off didn't you clean them off a bit yeah so they, yeah. We, you christened them i chris yeah <laughs> i christened the legs uh so yeah thanks so that was a great a great day and we, yeah yeah not a massive journey to what two no, and a half three, three, hour, bad, three hours from... and it well the the good thing was we weren't going on the m6 near birmingham because that's the bit where you just get well, all wolverhampton issues. shocking <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah it was it was a decent journey yeah three hours um, so we're back at a reasonable time yeah uh, and then um sunday charlie and i went plane spotting and plane photographing yeah yeah because Char charlie's got a nick on dslr hasn't he yeah so he wants to just uh, uh to be able to take better aviation photographs so i was i was uh, unpacking and putting everything away back in the workshop uh I had to do it yesterday. I really wanted to go to the airport and hang out with Nicola and Charlie, but if I wouldn't have put everything away yesterday, we'd have struggled, we'd have struggled we? because we were busy all day today. Uh, so I wouldn't have really got to do that till today. And then, uh, no, when? sorry, till tomorrow. Yeah. And then Matthew's coming on Wednesday to film a video. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, it's just, yeah. So, <sighs> busy week. <laughs> so well that's our week really um, so far uh yeah i'm at insta cake tomorrow um so it's instagram and cake um so you can hang out with your instagram yeah so there. i think there's about 10 of us going to that so it's kind of um i suppose it's a, a bit of a maker get together a lot of the people who will be going um make a lot of them do fabric and textiles that sort of thing yeah. um so um yeah we we really enjoy it. it's a, a good crowd so that would be we'll be doing that for four hours tomorrow um david says how are things going with chris's new assistant they're going very well thank you is we're still just trying to iron out some niggles as far as uh yeah just getting technology just getting the technology sort of like nailed down uh but yeah he's, he's a great lad very keen very very polite and respectful isn't it you know mm. you, you you pick him up from the station and you get you get half a dozen texts saying thank you <laughs> thank you for picking me up and you know uh so yeah he's from like say kowloon in hong kong yeah uh really nice lad and uh, well, we've got a bit of a backlog um 
we've probably got a couple of videos yeah to we've go. got some videos um, stacking up now which i just we, we were just struggling um him sending me the video so um i'm hoping i'll get some time this week to at least get one up um and well, get that sorted we just need to sort out it happens every time we say oh yeah we're gonna get an intern we're gonna get the videos up regularly can't wait and then you know he's been here this is his fourth week and we've only had one video up it's like damn it it's technology it's it, just... it can kiss my ass technology <laughs> it i'd do a better job if i just bloody hand drew every scene <laughs> bloody matchstick man it look shit at least we get some oh my god it frustrates me this I've, is had, technology I've had the for lad you. four weeks and i've only had one video up bloody, <laughs> chuck it all out the window for all i care yeah, pinhole camera, you're probably better off with one of them. <laughs> thing. Honestly, don't get me started. Yeah, there's a blind guy's about to have a meltdown here, Andy. I know, I'm I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting for the volcano to go off. Yeah, so, yeah, but uh, yeah. he's, you know, he's a nice lad. We're, we're having yeah. a bit of a joke here. But, yeah. We're, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. And this is, this you, is... you know, he's, he, this is his first ever job you know he's is is a nice lad but he's in a you know a strange country and you know he's he, he turns up at our house and you know the lad's gone from kowloon to lancaster uni to at home with the fishers <laughs> you know <laughs> you know i think it'd have come off better if we'd have spent a year in the nam <laughs> so uh flipping heck so yeah he's here on wednesday uh and then uh there's something else happening this week yeah yeah got yeah can't be mentioned no. can't, can't be mentioned no so you people that have been that know and listen you know that something important's happening uh this week oh, shh, don't say anything don't say anything <laughs> well they know what it is i'm just not going to tell them what day and time so mm. uh so yeah matthew wednesday yeah then the other thing that's happening this week <laughs> and then friday we're off to woodfest yes yes we're going to woodfest. woodfest again in north wales yeah uh and uh baz who yeah. we know timber marvels he's doing his first wood turning demonstration so we're gonna go there and, and heckle not heckle <laughs> i was thinking more throwing dirty rotten tomatoes at oh, him. Right, okay. uh, no we wouldn't heckle no we wouldn't heckle baz he's, he's very talented as yeah, well yeah uh and he makes some beautiful rocking horses yeah. and things like yeah. that doesn't he uh so yeah we're, it's his first wood turning demo we're going to go and lend our support and cheer him on and yeah. just you know he, he often turns up at our demos yeah. he was there last week he turned up to the d side demo uh he ho came hopeful. to the mold one no he came to the d side one he oh the mold one a couple uh, of yeah, months yeah. ago oh yeah yeah different demo so yeah, he's a nice lad uh and yeah got a lot of time for baz haven't we yeah so he's uh he's got a, a young son yeah uh, lives with his grandma looks after his grandma who's visually impaired uh so yeah we're gonna lend him our support and you know uh, pay it forward and he, he, the demos he's come and listened to of ours hopefully he's been you know uh picking up some hints and tips of you know what makes a good demo and the interaction and just being kind and enjoy it and look if something goes wrong who cares you just put the wood back on the lathe and if you can't rescue it you put a fresh piece of wood on the lathe and start again uh so yeah a man that hasn't made a mistake hasn't made anything mm so uh and it's a good way to learn that learning curve again that we we're talking about with andy you know when the pressure's on psh, yeah in at the deep end really in a, in a way it's a good way to learn it is uh because the nerves can it's like when you take an exam a written exam the nerves uh can work in your favor mm. favor favor uh so yeah busy week and then what's happening next weekend um quite weekend I think. quite weekend yeah yeah so uh i think that's pretty much uh up to speed it's sort of like paling into comparison <laughs> after having young mr burkey on so, yeah, it's like what we've done this week not a lot i know I, I think i think i'm gonna have to go out and try and steal a car actually just to compete <laughs> that'd go well wouldn't it hey 
uh, the reports <laughs> on the news in the morning. There are reports coming in of a blind guy that's stolen a car. He tried to get to the M6 but didn't quite make it. In fact, he didn't make it off the drive. He just he just drove it through someone's living room. I've got a fiver on you, Chris, if you try it. <laughs> hey, don't tempt him. Yeah, I, I, I have been known to turn the car around on the drive. Yeah. When I've wanted Nicola to turn the car around and back it up to the workshop so I can load it and she's she's not going as fast as I would like, <laughs> I'll have a go myself. Uh, well, actually, I haven't done it with this car. The, the car previous to this had the parking sensors, so it'd make that beep, 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 beep. This one hasn't, so I don't <laughs> risk it in this because... We have, but there's a little brick wall at the front yeah. that you have to be careful of. Yeah, I wouldn't chance it in this car because the other one was fine. I just relied on the parking sensors yeah. and, and did a, uh, a six-point turn in the road. But, nice. Uh, yeah, but... Well, now that you have uh, an earring, it's, uh, you know, you have superpowers, so... Well, now I've got my ear pierced, I would actually do it with the uh, the windows down and some uh, five-finger death punch on with, right. the, you know... Uh, <laughs> yes! With the devil horns, you know, whilst I crash through someone's garden wall. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah, hilarious. So I'm trying to get it on you, but... Why are you trying to get it on me? You see, you're better, you're in the darkness. I'm always in the darkness. <laughs> I'm half of being blind. What can I do about it? It's funny when people say that. Oh, you're in the dark. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Preaching to the converted there, sister. So, uh, well, I think that's it. <laughs> pretty much it. Yeah, let's go out and steal a car. <laughs> I'm on my way. I got to go buy a plane ticket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shame Concord's not flying still. You'd have been over here in five hours. I'd have waited for you. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, me and me and Andy Berkey driving around Salford into the city centre of Manchester, you know, and it'd be like you know the uh, the the chase scene from the Blues Brothers. Yes, yes. We could have that on the stereo. All the feds after us and the National Guard. That'd be funny. And we can, yeah, and then we can do a Thelma and Louise bit, right right into Salford Keys over the Ship Canal. Yeah, and our, 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 yes, and just as just as we hit the water, I can give Andy a big hug and a kiss and take a selfie. <laughs> so then, when the, when the divers find our rotting carcasses at the bottom of Salford Keys, they find <laughs> find the picture that Andy took. So it'd be bloody marvelous, right? <laughs> it'd, be like our, it'd be like our death photo, you know, that you used to do in Victorian times when people died. They photograph them. Yeah, and Andy'd be there like that. <laughs> you know, you know, with a goldfish sat in our mouths, well, actually, it'd be something like a carp or a pike. There. <laughs> so, are you up for that, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm in all the way. You know, hey, let's do it. Yeah, um, there you go. You. What a way to go out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's better to burn out than to fade away. You got that right. Yeah. Right so, then, and on right. that, and on that glorious, glorious image we've left everybody, we are going to uh, bow out and wish you all a, a fond good night, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are, uh, and we'll we'll be back here. What are you giggling at again now? What's... Tea plus G making tea is dying here. She's doing dolphin impressions, I think, but it could just be laughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thanks everybody for joining us. Yeah, if you can just imagine, generated, if you can it? just imagine Andy and I flying through the pearly gates in a, a ball of flame in our underpants. <laughs> That's the sort of image we want to leave you with. Hey, works for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Saint Peter, believe you're expecting us. <laughs> And that Peter Gunn theme playing loud, turned yeah. up to 11. Right, we're going now. Thanks for watching. You see, and this is all since I've had my ear pierced. <laughs> He's gone mad. I'm the, first, gone mad. I'm the first person to have ever suffered with ear piercing PTSD. <laughs> right, let's...
<laughs> Wayne Wood Turner is doing a live um, at nine o'clock. I'm guessing. Um, oh yeah. So go yeah. and watch Wayne the Wood Turner live. Um, next week we've got Dave G. Um, Dave G. Designs yes. um, as our guest. So. Um, yeah, go and watch Steve. Go and watch Wayne the Wood Turner. Yeah, lots of uh, live flip flip between. I knew Wayne was uh, practicing with his live because uh, we got that the test, other day. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's been testing. So uh, yeah, we've got Wayne and Steve uh, on live tonight. Have with them. Yeah, I think yeah. So yeah. So big love to everybody. Big love to you, Andy. Thank you so much, Andy, for being with us. Guys, I had an absolute blast with you. Anytime you call it, I'm there. All right, Thank mate. You. Thank you. Right then. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching and listening, and we'll see you same time next week. I got my ear pierced. <laughs> I, heard, I saw that. I saw that already. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye guys.